Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. What happens when you multiply two numbers? You probably memorize the rules in school. A positive times a positive is a positive. A positive times a negative is a negative. And a negative times a positive is a negative. These three rules make sense. But there was also a fourth rule. A negative times a negative is equal to a positive. What, what, what? This is one of the more confusing rules of arithmetic. And if you ever struggled with it, don't worry, you're in very good company. Some of the greatest mathematicians have struggled with the concept of negative numbers. This list includes the likes of Vieta, Descartes, Pascal, Euler, and De Morgan. They thought that negative numbers were absurd, should be discarded, are false, and should be rejected. So just negative numbers alone is a confusing concept. And if you want to understand why negative times a negative is a positive, that's an even greater level of difficulty. So in this video, I want to present a few intuitive justifications. Let me begin with one of the simplest explanations, which is pattern recognition. Imagine you are a mathematician thousands of years ago, and you're computing a list of products. We start out with 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. Then 2 times 2 is equal to 4, 2 times 1 is equal to 2, and 2 times 0 is of course equal to 0. Is there any kind of pattern in these products? Well notice when we go from the first line to the second line, we're decreasing the second number by 1. The result is the product will decrease by 2. The same thing is true when we go from the second line to the third line. We decrease the second number by 1, and this decreases the product by 2. Once again, we will decrease the second number by 1, and this decreases the product by 2. So if we continue the pattern, if we decrease this second number by 1, we will have 2 times negative 1, and this should decrease the product by 2. So decreasing the product by 2 will be 0 minus 2, and the product will be minus 2. So let's complete this for a couple more lines. If we decrease the second number by 1, we have negative 2, and the product will decrease by 2, so this will be minus 4. We then decrease this number again, so we have 2 times negative 3, and this will decrease by 2, so the product will be equal to negative 6. So we have 2 times negative 3 is equal to negative 6, this is not very controversial. But now, let's imagine we do this pattern with the first number. Imagine decreasing the first number by 1. So the next line will be 1 times negative 3. If we decrease the first number again by 1, we have 0 times negative 3. So what happens to the product then? 1 times negative 3 will be equal to negative 3, and 0 times negative 3 will be equal to 0, because 0 times any number will be equal to 0. Is there a pattern in these products? Notice we're decreasing the first number by 1, and this is going to change the product by plus 3. If we decrease the first number by 1 again, we again increase the product by 3. So imagine we decrease the first number by 1, so we will get negative 1 times negative 3, we then need to increase the product by 3, and this means the product will be equal to 3. So we have negative 1 times negative 3 is equal to positive 3. A negative times a negative is equal to a positive. Now just to make sure this property is true, let's increase this pattern by one more line. So we will decrease the first number, so we have negative 2 times negative 3, and this needs to increase the product by 3, so we have negative 2 times negative 3 is equal to positive 6. Each time we decrease this first number, we're going to increase the product. So each time we will have a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. Let me now proceed to another explanation, which is scaling the number line. So here's a number line, and let's see what happens when we scale it by some factor. If we scale it by 1, we will just create an identical copy of the number line. If we then increase the scale factor to a positive number greater than 1, we will essentially stretch out the number line at the ends. 
Now, let's see what happens if we vary the scale factor so that we take a factor that is less than one, but still positive. In this case, the scale factor will contract the number line so that all the numbers keep getting closer and closer to zero. If we end up with a scale factor of zero, all of the numbers will map to the number zero. So now what happens if we continue the pattern? What happens if we scale by a negative number? Let's first just consider the positive numbers on the top line. We know that a positive number times a negative number will be a negative number. So if we do that, we will end up mapping the positive end on the right side of zero to the left side of zero to be the negative numbers. We are flipping the numbers on the right side to the left side. So now let's consider the positive numbers on the second number line. When they are multiplied by a negative number, it will of course flip the numbers to the left side on the top line. But now look at what we have created. We have the negative numbers on the top number line being multiplied by a negative one, so a negative times a negative, and that is mapping to the positive numbers on the second number line. And therefore, a negative times a negative is a positive. Another explanation comes from the definition of velocity. In physics, velocity is defined as a change in displacement divided by a change in time. V is equal to delta x divided by delta t. Multiply both sides of the equation by delta t to give the equation V times delta t is equal to delta x. So how can this equation help us understand a negative times a negative is a positive? Suppose we have footage of a car driving in reverse. Since the car is driving in reverse, that would correspond to a negative velocity. If we play the footage forward, that would be a delta t that is a positive quantity. So which way will the car go? The car is of course going to be going backwards. The displacement of the car is negative. And we have shown that a negative times a positive is equal to a negative. No big deal. But now, what happens if we play the footage in reverse? The velocity is still negative, but now the delta t will be the opposite of what it was. We're playing it in reverse, so this will be negative. Which way will the car go? Well, of course, the car is going to go forward. And here we have a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. It's a delightful illustration why a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. A final explanation I want to present involves debts. Let's do a few money calculations. I give you three notes of $20. How much do you have? This corresponds to the mathematical problem of three times $20, which equals $60. A positive times a positive is a positive. Now, suppose I take away three of your $20 notes. How has your wealth changed? Since I am taking away something that will be negative three times the $20 notes, and the result will be negative $60. You have lost $60, and a negative times a positive is a negative. In the third situation, I give you three debts, each that are $20. This corresponds to the mathematical problem of a positive three, because I've given you three items, but each of the items is a negative $20, because each is a debt. Your wealth will have changed by negative 60, because a positive times a negative is a negative. Finally, suppose I take away three of your $20 debts. How are you now? Since I've taken away three of your debts, you will be richer. So we have negative three for the three things I take away and negative 20 because each of these is a debt and negative three times negative 20 is equal to positive 60. 
a negative times a negative is a positive. Not only does this explanation have a practical application in economics, but it is also of historical importance. This was essentially the explanation given by Brahmagupta around the year 628. I was browsing the Wikipedia entry, and I found a lot of interesting trivia that I just wanted to share. His book, Brahma Sput Siddhanta, is the first book to provide rules for arithmetic manipulations that apply to zero and to negative numbers. He also described gravity as an attractive force, which is quite amazing, and he is credited with the first clear description of the quadratic formula. So I would say we owe a great debt to Brahmagupta for understanding why a negative times a negative is a positive. Now, I would be remiss not to present the explanation that schools want you to know, because although it's a bit unsatisfying to many students, it is important to understand the theoretical basis for why a negative times a negative is a positive. So we start out with a few starting points. We first know that any number times zero is equal to zero. We also take the premise that a times the group b plus c is equal to a times b plus a times c. This is known as the distributive property. So if we want these two things to be true, it must be the case that a negative times a negative is a positive. Let's see why. Suppose we have two numbers a and b that are greater than zero. The opposite of a is a number, and any number times zero is equal to zero. But we can substitute in for zero, because zero is equal to b minus b. So let's go ahead and substitute in for zero, and we get this equation. We can then distribute negative a to both of these terms, and we have the equation negative a times b plus negative a times negative b is equal to zero. Let's add a b to both sides of the equation, and the first two terms will cancel out on the left-hand side. So we have negative a times negative b is equal to a times b. And a and b are both positive numbers, so this will be positive. So a negative times a negative, yes, is a positive. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.